Here are the Beatles. The 1960s, the Beatles, an unstoppable force in the world of music, riding high on the wave of Beatlemania. They had achieved a level of success that few bands could ever even dream of. Crowds of adoring fans, chart-topping hits, and even admiration for music legends like Elvis Presley. They used us as an excuse to go mad, the world did, and then blamed it on us. And we were just in the middle of that, in a, tr in a car or so, hotel room, we couldn't really do much. It was just a, a drag, you know, we knew that they wouldn't hear anything because it's just, you know, like a riot and not, not sort of like a show, you know. It felt dangerous, you know. They were in this big movie. We were the ones trapped in the middle of it while everybody else was going mad. We were the, actually the sanest people in, in the whole thing. Behind the scenes, the reality was not as glamorous as it seemed. The Beatles, once a tightly knit unit, began to experience internal tensions and conflicts. Their individual artistic visions diverged, leading to creative differences that would ultimately shape the fate of the band. During the recording of their infamous White Album, the cracks started to show. Ringo Starr, feeling overwhelmed by the tumultuous environment, briefly left the group, adding to the strain already present. Well, no, I only went out because I did feel like it was, you know, we'd done Pepper and that was fine. I, I don't feel good. I don't feel part of it. So, you know, then I came back and they were sending faxes to me, come on home. Right. And George at the studio full of flowers. That was great. The recording the process of the album was messy, reflecting the growing disarray within the band. Arguments and general fallout became common occurrences during the band's rehearsals, yet the public remained largely unaware of the growing tensions within the Beatles. The tragic death of their manager, Brian Epstein, also loomed over the group. Ever since Mr. Epstein passed away, it's never been the same. I mean, we've been very negative since Mr. Epstein passed away, and that's why all of us in turn has been sick of the ooh, discipline we lack. We've never had discipline. We've had sort of slight symbolic discipline. Another catalyst for the breakup was the presence of Yoko Ono, John Lennon's partner. The Beatles had a rule that girlfriends were not allowed in the studio, but John broke this rule, causing friction with the other members, particularly Paul. The tensions between the two started to escalate from this. So who or what caused the Beatles to split up? The truth is complicated. Decades of speculation and theories, yet no definitive answer. Was it John, Paul, or perhaps the effect of all their conflicts we may never know for sure. Paul McCartney suggested that John Lennon was the one who ended the Beatles. You, who broke it up? John, John did. Yeah. Uh, that's a long story. Well, others have also pointed fingers at different people. With limited knowledge of what the band was like at the time, we can only make educated guesses about who or what truly led to the dissolution. And one thing is for sure, although we may never know the truth of why they broke up, it doesn't really matter. The effect the Beatles had will never be forgotten.